Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing a very highly requested video about liquid aeration. And I actually didn't hear about this, this until you guys told me about it. So if you like the idea of me doing videos that you guys request or you have questions about, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you want the next video to be or what zone in the world you hail from because it actually helps me make videos just a little bit better curated to the majority of my audience. And with that being said, be sure to hit the subscribe button because that's the only way you're going to know if I make your video or not. Um, heads up. YouTube's gone crazy for some reason and it's deleting people's comments and I don't know what's going on and so I'm just going to apologize right up front. I'm sorry. I have no control over what YouTube's doing to me. If it's happening to you, it's not me. It's not you. It's YouTube. So hopefully they stop doing that eventually. They don't like small creators. What can I say? I'm just kidding. I don't actually know if they dislike me or not they've never said anything to me so let's look at liquid aeration so I think the best way to kick this video off is by reading direct from a website what liquid aeration is and honestly they're kind of all in and around this type of commentary so liquid aeration involves applying the lawn with a natural solution that increases oxygen levels at the roots and enables water to access the soil at a deeper level. While core aeration works by pulling out plugs of soil, liquid aeration permeates through the top of the soil and creates channels to allow nutrients to penetrate the roots and expand. This reduces soil compaction, improves nutrient and moisture absorption, and increases overall strength of your lawn to deal with the impact of winter. So let's dissect this just a little bit. Claim is it works just as well as mechanical aeration. So Mechanical aeration is when you get the little dog doo doo type looking soil plugs ripped out of your soil, which does work, especially on lawns. And it works very, very well on heavy clay soils. Um, and it is a very common way of helping your lawn out. So it claims that it's going to do the exact same way as mechanical aeration, and it's going to create channels and allow nutrients to penetrate and the roots to expand. Um, so what they are saying right off the bat is telling me that they are either flocculating the soil or they are dispersing the soil. So the only way to look at air, liquid aeration is to determine what chemical is in there and what charge that chemical has to determine what mechanism they are using within the soil, flocculation or dispersion. So let's first look at what flocculation is and then let's look at what dispersion is. So flocculation is something that happens in clay soils and the effects of flocculation tend to decrease the lower our cation exchange capacity is. So with cation exchange capacity, our clay soil, our soil is negatively charged, meaning if we add a positively charged ion to it, it adds like a magnet and it just glues itself together and it kind of makes these aggregates. And we can see this if we dig out with a soil shovel, we will see aggregated clumps of soil. And this is a very, very good sign that voila, we have flocculation happening. So uh, flocculation is a very good way of, um, it, it does, I mean, cause compaction to an extent, but it helps with structure. Meaning if we've rototilled our soil within an inch of its life, we can use flocculation to help bind that soil together to reduce things such as erosion. So if you have a big erosion issue with your soil, then flocculation is your solution. So we need to add a positively charged uh, cation to the soil structure. And these can come in the form of calcium, potassium, magnesium, sodium, you name it. This will cause um, flocculation and coagulation within the soil structure. And so I don't think that this is what they're doing here, 
because we have a lot of flocculation happening out in our lawns or in our gardens, especially for adding fertilizer. So fertilizer that contains any level of sodium, calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium is going to have a positively charged ion. And so therefore, so long as we're not rototilling, flocculation is going to be very, very high, which is why I think the mechanism they are using is actually dispersion. So dispersion is the absolute opposite of flocculation. And so it's actually going to use a negative anion to repel the soil from each other. So it's going to bind with the soil um, and not in the way that flocculation will. It will kind of, you know, anti-gravity, for lack of a better term, the soil and help keep things really light and fluffy, which is what we want in the case of our soil uh, in our lawn, because the pressure of human activity, lawnmowers, vehicles, uh, snow, the lack of rototilling, the very, you know, the roots of our grass don't really penetrate very deeply because we usually don't use fescue. We use things like Kentucky bluegrass on our lawns. And so we have a very subsurface type root system that doesn't penetrate down. We don't have any tap roots or anything crazy like that. So flocculation and compaction are a definite issue within our lawn structures. However, dispersion is going to force everything to pop apart for lack of a better term, which will help with water infiltration, nutrient capture, and uh, root penetration is all going to happen here in this case. Now, when you look online, I don't know why, I usually what I do with these videos is I will look in the journals that I have access to through my university login. I will look at the scientific journals, but then I'll also Google what you guys are seeing. So I will Google, for example, um, how does dispersion work in soil? Because I want to see what the common answer is that you guys would see without the science attached. And so a lot of bloggers and influence out there are saying that sodium can cause dispersion. Sodium doesn't cause dispersion. Sodium has an Na plus one. So the plus one is enough of a plus. Any plus is going to cause flocculation. So it's going to cause a compaction and um, aggregation within the soil. So I don't know why a lot of sites are saying that, but that's, that's false. So don't listen to that. I'm not lying to you. I promise you need a negative charge. So nitrates, nitrites will cause this phosphates, sulfates. So um, all our versions of nutrient uh, profiles that are uptaken by plants are in, are in the proper form for plant uptake. And they have negative charges to them, meaning they will push um, things apart. So it can have a negative one, it can have a negative four, doesn't matter, so long as it's negative, it's going to cause dispersion in some way. So this is where it gets a little bit murky. It's very difficult for me to say what is in every single liquid aeration product. They all seem to have a slightly different montage of what's in there, but I will leave some Amazon links down below for actual uh, negatively charged compounds, active ingredients within the liquid aeration that will cause dispersion and will not cause flocculation. Because again, we want dispersion, we do not want flocculation in this case. The most common compound active ingredient is uh, ammonium laterite sulfate, which is negatively charged and therefore will cause that dispersion and therefore will be a very successful version of liquid aeration. Now I can't guarantee they all have an active ingredient with a negative charge. So the easiest way to figure this out if you are at the store and you don't want to use the Amazon links before is you want to look at the active ingredients list and you wanna type in the name of the active ingredient into Google and then you want to say, uh, put a plus sign and say, um, ionic charge. So ionic charge and Google, oddly enough, is very good at telling you what that charge will be. So long as it has a negative number, it does not have a zero and it does not have a positive number, you are okay. And that product will work just fine for you. Now, if you're still not sure, feel free to send me a message, gardeningincanada.net, um, on the website, on Instagram, Facebook, in the comment section down below and I will look into it for you and I will let you know if it's good or not. But overall, I do think this product would work. It is working on very basic soil chemistry and uh, 
I mean, it, it's gonna work. It's gonna work for sure. It's going to work. Now, is it gonna work as good as mechanical aeration? No, it's not going to. The liquid aeration you would have to apply over time, over and over again, to see the results of this uh, and the benefits of this. It's not gonna be a single application, and voila, you have aerated. So, mechanical is gonna work much quicker. Um, and uh, you're gonna have to do it more often. But if you start with a liquid aeration program, uh, over time, your soil will disperse and disperse more and more and more. So over the years, um, over the season even, you're gonna start to begin to see the benefits of this, especially if you have compacted grass. And a really great sign of whether or not you have compaction in your front lawn is uh, in my soil book. I never talk about this, but I did write a at-home soil testing book for your, um, you guys to use. I will leave a link for that down below. But in there, I talk about how to look at compaction in your soil. And all you're going to use is actually one of those like flags or even a coat hanger. And you're just going to stick it in the ground. And if you immediately can't get it in and it just like hits basically a brick wall it's a very good sign your soil is compacted now if it just nicely glides right into the soil profile you probably have enough dispersion probably have enough aeration so you don't have to worry about it but if you go to stick it in and it just doesn't go down very far then that's a really great sign that liquid aeration or mechanical aeration is going to work for you a lot of people will tell you you can look at the lawn itself and determine whether or not it's compacted very very difficult there's lots of different reasons for why a lawn can look sick one of which is compaction but not always compaction there's a lot of things that can be going on there but liquid aeration will work if you do have compaction i want to thank you guys so much for watching uh be sure to give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and then comment because it helps with the youtube algorithm let me know if you've used liquid aeration how long you've been using it for and if yet you have seen any uh, results i would think it would take an entire season before an entire season of continuous uh application in order to see some benefits there but thanks for watching i'll talk to you guys next time bye